Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today, per a request from one of, one of our community, I'm building the task management template that I built in Excel on Google Sheets. If you're not familiar with the task management Excel version, you can click the card over here. And if you do want to see the um, Google Sheets version, just stay tuned. So the Google Sheets version is very similar to the Excel one, only it's on Google Sheets, obviously. And it has three different sheets, the tasks themselves, where you maintain the tasks, set up, where you define the ranges of the status and some drop down lists and dashboard where you see where you have the ability to actually filter everything and see um, just certain cases. So let's start with the tasks. So the tasks, the orange columns A through J are where you key in information manually. Um, B through E is our drop down lists coming from setup and everything else is keyed in manually. Then the blue columns K through N are calculated automatically. You also need to update the cell K2 to you know reflect the date that you're trying to check to analyze. So what so let's take a look, let's add another line and you will see. So for example so this is all the examples here are coming from sort of a uh, production plant where there are a few departments that are working together and this is sort of a um, let's say a project managers task um, review or someone else doesn't matter so I can add a task let's say pay supplier I don't know supplier let's say and now I have the drop down lists so I have here a few drop down lists and of course these are coming from setup. If you're not familiar on how to do this in Google Sheets, it's very easy. You need to click on data, data validation. Then you have a list from a range and you click on this here and just select the range that you want to have as an option. And of course, you just need to select which cells are going to be impacted. In this case, I just, uh, you know, keyed in manually here through here through through uh, row 403. So I have about 400 lines. So I've decided this will be purchasing and priority medium. And again, all of these are drop down lists. You can see them over here. So it's the same technique, I won't repeat. The requester, let's say, is the CEO, in this case. Buyer's responsibility. And let's say start date will be tomorrow. End date will be uh, next week. Okay, and so far I have zero progress on this. And you see here already cells here are showing you that the required progress for today is zero since it's supposed to start tomorrow that's why it's on schedule there are eight days remaining to complete this task and there's a range of five to ten um, so these are, these are just for filtering purposes if you want to to understand what are the urgent cases or not you'll notice that this line is colored in gray there's also conditional formatting here. So in the case that I mark this as completed, meaning 100% um, on the progress, so the entire row will be colored in gray. Um, so um, also you can see that the status has different colors. So off track is red, late is yellow, on schedule and ahead of schedule are green, different shades. So again, this is a simple uh, conditioning, conditional formatting for the 
cells themselves. Let's take a look. So this is in format, conditional formatting. And basically, I have, you see all these, four of these, if text contains light, then color it yellow. Okay, very simple. The only, let's say, trickier part is the line a conditional formatting, and this is simply with a formula. So the custom formula is if age one, or in this case, the progress equals one, then just color everything in gray. Whereas here, it refers to the text of the specific for specific cell. So it's two different types of conditional formatting that give you the result. To understand how the required progress is calculated, think of it as how many days, um, how many days, uh, or what was the progress based on the date? So it's the um, due date minus today divided by the due date minus the start date, okay? And one minus, just so it, um, it gives us a, number that we're going for is 100 percent and there's a minimum and a maximum of zero and one just so the number is between zero and one i don't want to show negative numbers or numbers that are greater than one so you can see for example in this case the due date is on this is the first of may and it started on the first of february so on um, today I need to be on 76 percent which makes sense because it's about two and a half months in so at least 76 percent I'm only at 30 you'll see that if I change that to let's say 55 60 okay on schedule you can see there's a tolerance so it's only going to show as late for about um, 5%, okay, between f minus 15 and 5%, and really late, off track, when the gap is more than 15%. So this is how you, you build it over here. You give ranges and then use basically... Um, a VLOOKUP with a um, close match, not an exact mass, match, which is what I got here. That just gives the closest match in ascending order. So that's what I use here to to figure out the, the uh, status dynamically. Um, also, you notice that there are if errors and if length here so just so it's blank whenever the the row is blank and as you saw immediately as something is filled out um, here in column K which depends on the dates so immediately as there's a date you will see that it's being calculated okay what else is interesting here so uh, manual input drop down lists manual manual calculation vlookup um, days remaining another vlookup we talked about the setup and the last thing here that i've built is a dashboard a dynamic dashboard now what's nice here is that you can select a department or a status or a combination of both so I want to see just the off track and it's going to show me just the rows that are off track I want to see off track for purchasing or I want to see on schedule for purchasing or I want to see just purchasing so and of course you know you can just add as many filters as you want um, and play with it and of course you can just delete and the way this is being um, done is very simple so Google Sheets has an, a very powerful function called query just like in SQL 
So if you're familiar with SQL, so this would be very uh, simple for you. So this is the function I'm using is query. And basically it has, let's say three arguments. The first one is the, um, the range that you're looking at. So in this case, we're looking for the range over here. The second argument is basically the, um, the query itself. You have to have select and you can add more options. And the last one is whether or not to include the headers or not. If you put one, it includes it. If not, it will not include. So in this case, I want to return all the columns. That's why I have a select asterisk. Where, meaning the condition, B, or the second column, which is the department, contains, and I'm referencing C2. So where B, department, contains this word, and L, which is the status, contains this word. So as you can see, you can just add more and more options. You can add, uh, and progress is greater than something. Whatever you want to do here, you can do quite easily and build yourself a very nice dashboard. So these were the three parts. You got the setup, defining the drop-down lists, and the ranges for the different status. You have the tasks themselves that you need to key in the data, and change the date to reference progress, and the dashboard. So if you've joined this, enjoyed the, the video and the content, please hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next video. Bye.